she, Pedro Blanco was probably his first, I think, his first actual teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pedro brought him, <laughs> he came brought him over to this kid, he was a string bean. He was so thin and his eyes were all big and excited, he wanted to play flamenco. He loved Paco. Oh. He just loved Papa the Little yeah. And he wanted to, to play like that. And he already, you know, had this facility. And um, so Pedro brought him. He was put, working in the Tablao, La, La Taberna Gitana in Malaga, where I was, working in the same Tablao. And the other guitarist, so there was Pedro Escolona, who passed away recently. Oh, how sad. And it was like Pedro was, was really our, our leader, our teacher, uh, more than anybody. And, but that was in the Tablao. But Pepe would always hang out with me because I was an American. Mm -hmm. And I had these other ideas. Mm -hmm. so, so he could get and learn what he could from these other guys, but he could get things from me he couldn't get from them. Oh. It was very interesting. Yeah. I also introduced him to the Oud and to, to, to rock, jazz, folk. I mean, I, I taught him everything on the guitar that I knew in one year. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he learned everything. Wow. Tremendous facility to learn and remember. We just had so much fun, the two of us, all the time, day after day. And then I got him a job working at the Taberna Gitana, that, uh, because uh, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't pay me for lessons because he didn't have any money to pay, but it wasn't that. It was that it was like a duty among us, the guitar players who were working at, at those times. It was so obvious that he had this talent that, that you're bound to pass on what you know to, to help. Mm -hmm. See, so when Pedro Blanco brought him, he said, "I, I can't, I can't teach him anymore. You got to, you got to teach him that." <laughs> That's how it started. Oh. And Pedro Escalona was tough on him. He'd flick him in the back, what they call Nino. He'd flick him in the back of the head like that, and tease him, <laughs> and make, make, tell him he couldn't play. You know, it was hard on him. Yeah. But all this was this is the way it was. Yeah. And um, so yes, he did learn a lot from me, but it, he learned. Uh, so much from watching, listening to the recordings of Paco. He t Paco mm -hmm. was his idol, mm -hmm. but that's that's what was happening in those times. Paco de Lucia sure. was definitely the leader, and Pedro Escalona knew a lot of Paco de Lucia material, and he would play it. He also had his own stuff too. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's the story of Tomatito and myself. I'm very happy and proud of him in every way because he's a a wonderful person, like Paco de Lucia. And then, of course, he got to know Paco de Lucia and work yeah. with him and record with him. And wow. That's wonderful. Amazing. And Camarón took him on to be his accompanist after Paco. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he's, he's like one of the, the foremost flamenco guitarists in the world. Yeah? Right now. That's right. Tomatito. He's yeah. major. Yeah. And he deserves to be in this position. I, he's real. He's authentic. And yeah. he's, he's a, a great musician. Yeah. I miss him. Well, maybe um, if this interview airs on YouTube, he'll uh, contact you. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's really busy. I know that he's yeah. really busy. And, uh, but busy. but uh, they always have time to honor their their teachers, you know. Well, Especially the fact that you gave him lessons with, for for uh, for free for a year. You know, they they have. It seems like in the flamenco world, there there's an obligation to your teacher. Uh, yeah, now I don't know about the times now, but back then th there was an aficion. We, we really loved the guitar. We loved flamenco and we shared. Uh, there wasn't some kind of competition uh, that, that there is in this country and stuff. People, are, they covet their, their knowledge, you know? Yeah. But in Spain, um, no. Um, we shared, we shared our knowledge. And, and, and tested each other right away. Like Pedro would play, he'd play something like this. He said, that flamenco, no? That flamenco? And he's saying, is that flamenco? Is that, is that good? Did yeah. you like that? I just created that right now on the spot, right? And we'd say, yes or no. We were honest. We'd look each other in the eye. There was no... Nothing like like I've seen. In a, it was open in your face. 
and that's how we were. We played like that. It and was a different time. Different time. We had no amplification. Hmm? Mm -hmm. We had to, to, my fingernails were all broken off. The, it was green, sometimes even blood. Really, bloody fingers, all of us. Because we had to beat the guitars to accompany the dancers. Yeah. And, and see, the, the job of the guitarist, of the flamenco guitarist, is, is not to, to, to show off or, or if you think you're good, no, no. You are there to accompany the singers and the dancers. The singers are more important you know, because the art of flamenco is really about the cante, the singing. You don't even need the guitar. Yeah. There's palmas and then maybe dancing, uh, dancing. The guitar is an afterthought in a way, and, and so in Spain, traditionally, it's the art of accompaniment. You learn to accompany the singing and the dancing, and you have to cover up their errors and their mistakes. They have to look good. They have to come across, and you get blamed for them, from them, sometimes even in front of the audience. Uh, they might make a mistake, and if you don't pick it up and cover it and make them look good, you get blamed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one teacher of mine, Emilio Prados. Talk about pressure. One teacher of mine, Emilio Prados, a wonder, another great flamenco guitarist, unsung hero, wonderful. And uh, he, he, he saw my progress. I was coming back to New York and back, to, I was living in Spain most of the time at that time. And I, but I'd come back to New York and work uh, in New York at the Chateau Madrid and and with dance companies traveling around this country, etc., and so forth. And he, he said to me one day, he said, hmm, he said, you're getting better. He said, I've noticed that you're learning how to cover up all the mistakes of all the dancers, and they, they, they like you. They want you to play for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, he was very hard on me. Oh, oh, yeah, he would insult me. He, he, uh, some some teachers were, were were nice to me. Others were mean, and you know everything in between. Yeah. Well, it seems like it it's it's paid off. What do you mean? <laughs> paid off. Well, well, because you you're you're quite an accomplished flamenco guitarist. Well, I I, I uh, I'm I'm competent. I know what to do. I uh, I learned it. I've done it. You know, been there, done that. I guess I can say that all that stuff too. But then I'm a perennial student of life. Not just the guitar of life. I'm fascinated by science, by wh wh what's happening, the world, where we came from, where we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I cannot. I, I could never be somebody to, to just. Let's say I, I became successful, had a lot of money or something, or was recognized. Uh, boy, I, w I wouldn't be sitting on any laurels whatsoever. But I'd say, well, uh, I, I've done what I can do, and I'll, I'll continue making an effort to improve. I, I still practice. Mm -hmm. I still play. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm reclusive now. See, uh, uh, I don't like really playing much in front of audiences unless, unless they're paying attention. You yeah. know, some, some basic kind of respect. I guess I'd exactly. have to play in a concert situation or a private thing, but to, to, to just sit there, you know, when people are eating and drinking and talking and being distracted and, and being background Music, yeah. uh, I, I did enough of that that I, I can't do that anymore. It, it's, it's, right. it's not interesting at all. Yeah. And uh, some of my friends are still doing it, <laughs> you know. Uh, but we, we, we just have, have to go forward with what yeah. we can do. Yeah. yeah. And complain as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When did uh, you... you uh, you moved to Santa Fe in the... In the in 1980. 1980, yeah. Yeah. How's the, uh, how do you find the flamenco scene here in America, in, 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 in particular Santa Fe? No, I'm not impressed. I never was. No. You no, I tried, for, to do, uh, I tried to do something about it in 1981 because I was playing for Jose Greco. I had been his guitarist for a number of years, so I, I tried to... Uh, I did. I, it happened, and he came... And, uh, I played for him, and... Lorenzo Versila, another guitar player from Madrid, he was the other guitar player and the company. Palete was the singer and there was dancers and we played at La Fonda Hotel mm -hmm. and was very successful. The people really, they loved it mm -hmm. because I, I felt that there was something about here, New Mexico, what, what, what it looks like, the land looks like Spain, mm -hmm. there's the culture, the people here. 
Um, but the people here in New Mexico relate more to Mexico than Spain. Mm -hmm. Now it's true that here in northern New Mexico, they're they're more Spanish from Spain, mm -hmm. than, and and there's certain songs and certain things that they do here that are like from archaic Spain, 500 years ago, mm -hmm. that they continue to do. The flamenco is is something that evolved in Spain, and. It, the guitar was invented as a guitar by Antonio Torres and from Almeria, we know that, in the mm -hmm. 1850s. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was introduced very much. This is very similar, this instrument that you made, that, that others make that in, the, in the style of Antonio Torres, mm -hmm. flamenco and classical guitars. And so that's when the guitar became part of flamenco. And people today know this. It's supposedly part of flamenco, the guitar. Mm -hmm. You take the guitar away from this and you can't replace it with a banjo or a mm -hmm. violin mm -hmm. or anything else. This is what it is. Yeah. So here in New Mexico, uh, I've had a problem all these years that I've lived here because I love New Mexico, I love the people here, everything. You know, I'm totally happy and content. I feel like it's my home here. Mm -hmm. I miss Spain in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't recognize it if you went there today. No, I would. I, I, I went back in 1991. That was the last time I was there. 20 years ago. Yeah, I was appalled at what had happened uh, then. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it was going to happen, so even though I was appalled, but I still was appalled. And from what I've heard, you know, it's just gotten even more so commercialized, uh, mm. et cetera, et cetera, more populated, more problems. Uh, and, uh, but I saw all that coming anyway, so I uh, wasn't surprised. Uh, but but there's, of course, the real flamenco, the, the heart of what flamenco really is, I don't think it's died. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's uh, the, I've seen some videos, YouTube, right, mm -hmm. of wonderful, wonderful young people who, are, who really respect the tradition. And so it's alive, it's happening. Yeah. And there's families doing it and all that. So this whole this whole other thing with the jazz, with all the fusion, you know, I'm part of that too. One of my recordings, Adelante. See, I was criticized for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'm happy with it. It's one of the best recordings I've made. I'm not. I'm not. So where 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 can people get your recordings? Well, yeah, yeah. That, well, they have to go to the carloslomas.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's a website. It's not completed yet, but it's close. It's close. Uh -huh. yeah. And basically, what's what's available on there is is downloads. 